Last time we presented Creeps by Night, we were invaded by an unknown uh, creep. Well, this time I have scrupulously inspected the audio track and found it creep free. So once again we present Mr. Boris Karloff in tonight's episode of Creeps by Night, The Reckoning, on Radio Classics at the radiodadio.com. We bring you Creeps by Night. Presents the international star of stage and screen, the master of mystery, Boris Karloff, in Creep by Night. How do you do? This is Boris Karloff inviting you to join with us for another dramatic exploration into the unknown darkness of the human mind. Our theme tonight is revenge. We have chosen for you a story that plums the very depths of one of man's primary emotions. The eternal seeking of an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. This is the story of a man who waited 20 long and heartbreaking years before the opportunity came to seek vengeance. But when it did, he stalked his prey with the cold and horrible stealth of a black panther. Creep by Night presents Boris Karloff as George Miller in The Final Reckoning. Our scene is the warden's office of the state penitentiary. A middle-aged man, his shoulders hunched and his hair prematurely gray, stands before the warden's desk, clothed in an ill-fitting prison-made suit. His face is yellowed with the pallor of long confinement, but his eyes, set deeply in dark, shadowed hollows, are bright and clear. Looking at him, the warden speaks. Well... I wish you'd reconsider, George. I don't like to see you walk out of here in your condition. I'll be all right, Gordon. I'll be a fool. You've just gotten over a bad case of pneumonia. Why not spend the next week or so in the hospital? Let Doc Reed put you back on your feet. My time is up at noon today, isn't it? Yes, but we glad to. That's when I'm leaving. The moment that noon whistle blows. You're in no shape to travel. Look at you. You're still sick, man. Deathly sick. I've been sick for almost 20 years, Warden. Ever since those iron gates out there closed behind me. I've waited a lifetime for the cure. Planned for it. Now I'm going to get it. Oh, you're just being stubborn, George. I don't understand it. You've been a model prisoner in every way. In the entire history of the penitentiary, only three men have had life sentences commuted. And you're one of them. And yet, in a matter that concerns your well-being, you act like an obstinate fool. Why? Because I've got something to do. Something very important. Hmm. What's more important than your health? The thing I've got to do. Wait a minute. Are you going to do something that uh, might land you back in here? Is that it? Don't worry, Warden. You know, come to think of it, George, there's something I've always wanted to ask you. Something personal. Go ahead. In all the years you've been here, why have you refused to see visitors or mail? 
Why did you completely cut yourself off from the outside world? Well, it... It all boils down to this. A man ages a lot in 20 years. His voice changes. And his way of talking. His features change. He becomes an entirely different person. Especially in a place like this. Just knowing that you're hemmed in by four walls. It does something to you. Something... Well, that's the answer. It's no answer at all. Yes, it is. I didn't want anyone to see me age, to see the changes that were coming over me. The way it is now, the George Miller who's walking out of here at 44 is nothing like the George Miller who was brought in at 25. They're two different people. No one outside this prison will ever recognize me. Mm. And is that what you want? That's exactly what I want. Why? You've got nothing to be ashamed of. You've paid your debt to society. There's another debt I have to pay to myself. It's been owing for a long time. Uh, I don't like the way you're talking, George. What's behind all this? Twenty years, Warden. The best part of my life. A minute ago, you asked me to look at myself. I don't have to look. I can feel it down inside. I'm an old man. An old man at 44. Self-pity is a bad thing, George. I'm not pitying myself. I'm thinking about what brought me here. You've got the record right there in front of you. I said I was innocent then, and it still holds. I'm innocent now. That's a closed book. Why not let it stay closed? Because there's an unfinished chapter still to be written. Remember, you haven't served your full term. You'll be on probation for five years. I remember. I've had a long time to think it over. Hmm. Incidentally, while we're at it, there's one more thing that's been puzzling me. You'd better hurry. It's almost noon. Six months ago, when it seemed pretty certain that your commutation was coming through, you made a strange request. You asked to be relieved of the job of running the prison library. A job you'd held as far back as I can remember. And you asked me to assign you uh, as an apprentice to the prison barber. I granted that request, but I, I wondered about it at the time. Would you care to tell me why you suddenly decided to become a barber? I thought it might be a good idea to learn a trade. That's not true, George. There's the noon whistle. That means I'm a free man, doesn't it? Yes. Goodbye, Warden. Take care of yourself. You haven't answered my question, George. You mean... Why did I suddenly decide to become a barber? Yes. I told you. I wanted to learn a trade. And I told you that's not the truth. You're right, Warden. It isn't. No kidding. Yeah, got his sentence commuted. Do they know? If he does, he better start moving. Charlie, this is Duke. I just cut Jim off. George Miller's out. Wonder what he'll do. You want to hear something, honey? George Miller's out. Boy, would I like to see Ace when he gets the news. Well, what do I? It's true, Ace. They commuted his sentence. He got out yesterday. Uh, what did I tell you? I spend a hundred grand a year on smart lawyers, and where do I get my information? From a hophead. A bar fly. But Ace. Oh, sure, sure. I'm out of my mind. I don't know what I'm talking about. George Miller's dead. He died in prison ten years ago. Ah. 
Well, that's what they told us. Who told you? Our sources of information. Your sources of information. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Now, look at And I'll get out before I lose my temper. You get only that out, I said. His sources of information. There, get me a drink. Oh, Ace, honey, don't get yourself all upset. Shut up. Ace, Shut honey. up and stay out of this. None of your business. Is that a nice way to talk? Who is this George Miller? I said it's none of your business. What's that? Just a doorbell. I'll answer it. Wait a minute. Now what? Don't open that door till you find out who it is. A ball You heard me. Find out who it is first. Okay. Who is it? Who is it? No answer, Ace. Damn. Miller, trying to trick me. Ace, why is the sheet? Take it easy. Keep your voice down. Now listen to me. In case anything happens, he threatened me. I had to protect myself. Do you understand? Yeah, but... Ace, what are you doing with that gun? Never mind. You just follow orders. All right. I'll open the door. Slowly. Ace, hang on. Open it, I said... Nobody here. What's that on the floor? No! What is it? Rat! A dead rat! Okay, boss. What about the bag, Dave? Chuck will bring them. Come on. How long have you had this place in the mountains, Dave? Oh, a couple of years. Mm. Sure is gloomy looking. Hell, what did you expect? A summer resort? All I want is a place to hold up. Lay low, the boys get Miller. Well, there should be a bell around here. Somebody in the house? Don't you ever get tired of asking questions, Vera? I told you on the way up, there's a caretaker. Ah, the bell doesn't work. Well, if you ask me, this is all a lot of crazy... Nobody's asking you. Hey, Sinelli's running away from a stir bomb. Pipe down. Somebody's coming. But good evening, Mr. Dinelli. Oh, good evening. Everything all set? Yes, sir. The master bedroom is ready. Now we'll go right up. This is Miss Carroll. How do you do? Hello. You're not the same man was here last year, are you? No, sir. That was Edward, my cousin. He's been ill, and I've been substituting for him. My name is... is Walter. Okay. Bring up a couple of brandies. We'll be upstairs. Yes, sir. I sure hate to be holed up in a place like this for the rest of my life. I'll just say the word, and Chuck will drive you back into town. I can't kid me, honey. Well, stop it. Right now, I'm not in a kid mood. Okay, now, there. What's wrong with this room? Well, it's very nice. Plenty of space, four closets, double exposure. What more do you want? Nothing, darling. Just the kiss. Now, ah, wait a minute, wait a minute. Close the door. Since when were you bashful? Now, look, Vera. Get one thing straight. I came up here to play safe. There's a guy gunning for me. Until he's out of the way, I'm not taking any chances. Oh, sure, I understand, honey. What I don't get is why you're so afraid of this George Miller, whoever he is. What did you do to him? Yeah. I think I sent him up, put him behind bars. Did you? You know, one of these days, Billy, you're going to ask the wrong question. I know. It's none of my business. That's the ticket. Did you tell me one thing, Ace? What? Those, um, dead rats. When we found outside the apartment door, and the one that came by parcel post in that little wooden coffin. What do they mean? What do you think they mean? I don't know. It's got something to do with George Miller. Yeah. Yeah, well, you guessed right. Miller's trying to get me jittery. 
He knows I've got a bad heart. Planting these things to tell me he thinks I'm a rat. I did want if he has anything to do with it. Hey, Tom. Now, don't worry. I'm safe up here. The boys will get Miller. Yeah? It's fault to serve with your brandy. Okay, okay, come in. Uh, just, just put the tray down on the table. Yes, sir. Will that be all, sir? I guess so. What about our luggage, Jace? Oh, yes. Did my man bring the bags up? Yes, sir. They're in the hallway, sir. Well, bring them in, will you? Yes, sir. So the water is. Yeah, I'll take it straight. Where shall I put the bags, sir? Oh, just set them down any place. Yes, sir. Will that be all, sir? Yeah. And uh, don't forget to lock up. I won't, sir. Good night. 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 Oh, that yes or no, sir, routine is going to drive me nuts. Talks like one of those fancy movie butlers. Looks like a zombie. <laughs> Here's your drink, honey. Yeah. How about you? No, I better get the bags unpacked first. All the stuff would be wrinkled. Well, here's how. I needed that drink. Now, oh, maybe I can relax. Sit down and take it easy, honey. You know, it's not going to be so bad staying up here for a week or two. Hey, how do you open this bag, Ace? Which one? Yours. Black leather. Oh, well, there's a little gadget on the lock. Just press it and it snaps open. You got it? Uh-huh. And we'll get a good rest. Ooh. What's the matter? Look! The bag. What? Another dead rat. <laughs> Talk, you double-dealing skunk, or I'll spit your skull. Please believe me. I, I didn't do it. I'm sorry. Talk, I said. Spell it. I, I ain't got nothing to spell. Now listen, Chuck. No. I know your kind. No. I know them from way back. You tell your mother for cash on the line. George Miller got to you. No. He paid you to slip that dead rat into my suitcase. No. No. Get up. I don't trust you either. I don't trust anybody. You're all a bunch of blood-sucking double-crossers. Boy. You heard me. You'd like to see me dead, wouldn't you? Get you out of your mind. Now, get out, both of you. No. Get out, I said. Get out of the house. Let's stay out. Yeah, who is it? It's Walter, sir, with your brandy. Now, bring it in. This is the last bottle, sir. Yeah, put it down. Yes, sir. (laughs) Will that be all, sir? Yeah, yeah, that's all. Who is it? It's Walter, sir. Come in. I thought perhaps you'd like something to eat, sir. It's been three days since you've taken any solid food. Yeah, three days. I brought an omelet and some toast. Oh, thanks, thanks, Walter. Quite all right, sir. Hey, wait a minute. Yes, sir? You were pretty nice to me, Waller. Thank you, sir. Yeah, pretty nice. And I'm the kind of a guy who don't forget. I don't forget if a guy's nice to me. And I don't forget if he stabs me in the back. Neither do I, sir. Come in. I'm sorry to disturb you, sir. Ah, it's all right, it's all right. Come on in and close the door. Yes, sir. What do you got there, Waller? Well, I thought now that you're feeling a little better, sir, that perhaps you'd like to be shaved. It's been almost a week, you know. <laughs> yeah, don't tell me you're a barber, too. I have been a barber, sir. Well, I could use a shave, I guess, all right. If I may say so, sir, I think you'll find it very refreshing. Okay, go ahead. Where do you want me? The chair you're sitting in will be all right, sir. I'll get some warm water in the bathroom. You know, Walter, I've been thinking. When I go back into town, I'm going to take you with me. Yeah, I could use a man like you. That's very kind of you, sir. I like people like you around me. People who don't ask questions of getting your hair. Take care of what you're supposed to, and that's the end of it. I try to keep my place, sir. <laughs> you got the right idea. 
Yeah, well, I do. Lean back. In just a moment, sir. I'll have to fasten the strop to the back of the chair. I want the razor good and sharp. <laughs> You'll need it sharp for this bit. Yes, sir. You must have been wondering about me these last few days, Warren. No, sir. Not particularly. You mean you wouldn't like to know why I've been hiding out here in the mountains? Sure, you must have a good reason, sir. Yeah, you can say that again. Someone's gunning for me. Gunning for you? Uh Uh-huh. Somebody trying to get me. Guy named Miller. George Miller. The name sounds familiar. He got a life sentence for murder about 20 years ago. Yeah, there's quite a story out of the papers. He killed a girl. Did he? That's what the jury thought. They gave him first degree with a recommendation for mercy. That saved him from the chair. What did you think? What did I think about what? Lean back, sir. I'm almost ready for you. Hey, isn't that razor sharp enough yet? Not quite. I haven't used it in some time. What did you think about George Miller's conviction, sir? Uh, What's the difference what I thought? The jury cooked his goose. Did they? Yep. Oh, come on, come on. What are you going to shave me get to it? I'm ready now. Lean back, sir. I'll soak you up. Okay. I assume this... This George Miller is out of prison now. Yeah. Got a commutation. Hey... You sure you don't need a lawnmower to get this beard off? I can do very well with a razor, sir. You know, I'm going to feel like a new man when you get through. Yes, a completely new man. (laughs) Ah, you're a funny guy, Waller. You talk like a college professor. I've had a lot of time to read and study in the past 20 years. A lot of time. Yeah? That's enough soap. Now, just relax, sir. Does the razor pull? Nope. Feels all right. That's fine. Nothing like a good, sharp razor. Yeah. Now, don't move. It's rather difficult shaving you in this chair. If you move, I may cut your throat. That's not funny. It wasn't meant to be funny, Ace. What did you say? Sit back, Ace. One slip and you're finished. You're a dead rat. George Miller. That's right. It's been a long time, hasn't it, Ace? George. George, you wouldn't kill me in cold blood, would you? This isn't cold blood, Ace. This is hot blood, heated for 20 years. That's how long I've waited. Feel how sharp the razor is. No, no, George. Be careful. Doesn't take much to split a throat from ear to ear. You know that, George. George, I'll give you anything you want. Name your price. You couldn't meet it. Only one thing can pay for those 20 years. George, I've got a bad heart, you know. Yes, so I've heard. All I'm asking for is a break. You give me a break when you frame me and set me up for life. I figured you'd beat the rap. I never thought they'd convict you. Then you admit framing me. Yeah, yeah, but I never figured you admit that you killed the Maguire girl because she knew too much, because you wanted her out of the way. Yeah, yeah, but that's enough. It's more than enough. Now feel the razor on your throat. Cutting. No, George. No. Cutting deeper. Down. Deeper. You said you'd be a new man when this was over. But you're wrong, Ace. You're only a dead rat. 
Who is it? It's Vera, A. Eh? I've come back. Come in, Miss Carroll. Oh, hello, Walter. Is Mr. Gnelli? Oh, there he is. Shame. Ace, darling. I couldn't stand being away from you. I had to come back. I, cu- I couldn't... Walter. What's the matter with him? Is he asleep or something? I'm afraid not, Miss Carroll. Then why is he slumped in the chair? Why is I staring that way? Why does he move? He can't move. He's dead. Dead? Oh, no. Walter. Yes, he's dead. And my name isn't Walter, Miss Carroll. My name is George Miller. George Miller? George Miller? Yes. And you... You killed him? No, Miss Carroll, I did not kill him. You don't see any blood, do you? But he's dead. He said he was dead. I'm afraid I played rather a gruesome joke on him. You see, I was shaving him with a very sharp razor. After I told him who I was, I held the back of the blade, the dull side, against his throat. (laughs) As you know, he, he had a bad heart. Unfortunately, it, it couldn't stand the strain. You murdered him. You got the chair for this. You're wrong, Miss Carroll. Quite wrong. Ace Janelli died of a heart attack. That's what a medical autopsy will show. You caused it. You brought it on. That would be very difficult to prove. I figured this out so carefully, Miss Carroll. I paid with 20 years of my life for a murder I did not commit. And now there's nothing the law can do to me. A one that I did commit. But you Boris Karloff in the final reckoning. Creeps by Night is directed by Dave Drummond. Original music is composed and conducted by Al Sachs. The entire production is under the supervision of Robert Maxwell. That's Radio Classics for this time around. Be sure to join me again soon when I'll bring you another episode from those golden days of my favorite medium. And remember, what's old is new again at theradiodaddio.com. I'm Dave Allen.